Morning, Vice President Berliner, members of the council. My name is Harriet Quinn. I'm testifying on behalf of the Montgomery County Civic Federation as co-chair of the MCCF Planning and Land Use Committee. The MCCF supports orderly growth and sustainable development supported by adequate public facilities. The association members of MCCF represent over 150,000 households from Civic and Homeowners Association across the county. Thanks for the opportunity to provide testimony on this bill, which as presented in the packet would permanently abolish the Office of People's Council from the county code and replace the OPC with a community zoning and uh, land use officer that would not have the ability to appear in zoning proceedings. During the MCCF October 10th meeting, the MCCF passed an emergency resolution to oppose this bill. It was an emergency resolution because the bill was introduced on October 4th with hearing originally scheduled for October 21st without any prior consultation with communities for whom the OPC was intended to be utilized. Residents learned about the bill from seeing it on your agenda. Members were very disappointed for a variety of reasons. Just as the MCCF was very involved with businesses in the establishment of the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission in 1927, and the long battle to gain home rule charter form, a, home room, a home rule charter form of government for Montgomery County in the 1940s, so too was the MCCF also instrumental in the establishment of this office in the, in the code in 1990. The office uh, was established to, quote, represent the public interest in the county's land use and regulatory process. The office assists residents and citizens associations in presenting their issues in land use hearings. Other Maryland counties also have had, long had, since the 1970s, an office of People's Council to represent the public interest in zoning matters, including Prince George's County, Baltimore County, which has two attorneys, and Harford County, which also has an advisory board that rec makes recommendations to the Office of People's Council. The County Council decided to defund the 1.8 positions and $246,000 for the OPC in 2010 due to financial constraints, but in the past five years, the Council has provided funding for, two, for an Office of Development Ombudsman along with two development coordinators within the County Executive's Office for a total compensation of $577,000. You've also provided funding for an unlimited term for, for a special counsel to implement a general development agreement in White Oak for a cost of four to $500 an hour. The most recent budget report of the County Executive Office states with regard to the new development ombudsman that it acts regularly as a liaison to the development community for the county and facilitates development projects. He has made recommendations to the Council on proposed ZTAs and worked with regulatory agencies on matters related to the subdivision staging policy. So who is at the table to represent the public and neighborhood's concerns with regard to the proposed ZTAs? Bills like this one and the subdivision staging policy, subdivision staging policy changes, some of which are being made on the fly and never brought up during the year-long public process. MCCF believes that the disconnect between the planning process and the general public has been exacerbated since the time this important office was defunded. A community resource officer does not replace the value of having the mission of the OPC office fulfilled, which is that it serves to protect the public interest in land use hearings by promoting a full and fair presentation of relevant issues to achieve balanced administrative records. Second, the office provides technical assistance to residents and citizens associations so that they can effectively participate in the county's land use control process. We respectfully request that the funding for the OPC be reestablished and that the successful model of Hartford County of a People's Council Citizens Advisory Board also be established. Thank you so much for your attention and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, Ms. Quinn. Mr. Cope. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Robert Cope. Uh, when I first signed up, I signed up as an individual or an ambassador, I guess, without portfolio. I come to you today with portfolio. You're never without portfolio, <laughs> Mr. Cope. We know you. Okay. Th well, I come today with portfolio because at the Citizens Coordinating Committee on Friendship Heights at our meeting in October, uh, we voted to endorse the bill. And so I'm here uh, not as an individual. Uh, but for the Citizens Coordinating Committee on Friendship Heights. And there's a couple reasons why we endorse the bill. Uh, number one, 
I didn't realize when I came here that we were going to be on TV this afternoon. Someone once told me I have a face for radio. Um, <laughs> but but, ser but ser seriously, uh, as you look at whether this panel here or as you look at the panels when I come here and testify, uh, there's always been a comment that we need to get other people involved and we need to get other parts of the county involved and that uh, we don't need all the same old faces. I think that this bill can help do that. I think that uh, this bill, uh, this officer, this person needs to not just sit in the office but needs to go around to give some classes on what the heck zoning is all about. Um, zoning is not that difficult. Um, you know, lawyers get paid a lot of money for some things that are pretty simple. Uh, and uh, this is one of them. And so we need to get other, other faces involved, and I think that this, can, this officer is something that can do that, number one. Number two, we live in the age of the collectivist. Not activists, but the collectivists. You're sent an email, and you click, 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 and you guys get thousands of emails, which mean absolutely nothing. I mean, let's be honest. Um, we need to have an officer go out and educate these groups and provide you all with some uh, positions of substance from the areas of the county that are, that are involved, that are not necessarily getting involved uh, in this day and age. And I think that this is an important bill. Uh, the coordinating committee thinks this is an important bill. We really hope uh, that you endorse this proposal and, and move it forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Bernstein. Good afternoon, everybody. Max Bronstein speaking as an individual. I heartily support your efforts to establish a county office to inform residents about zoning and land use matters so that residents may more effectively participate in the development process. However, I feel the guidelines in Bill 4116 overly reduce the effectiveness of the proposed resource officer. I speak from experience gained from involvement in four development cases Two were major and very protracted. All the people participating in those cases were grateful for the very professional assistance we received from the People's Council. The Council advised us emphatically that his role was strictly impartial and evidenced that neutrality throughout our experience with the Council. To testify effectively in hearings at the various stages in the development approval process here are items with which participants should be familiar. Master plan, rules and regulations, the, uh, and here is the paperwork generated by one case. These two things together are the 20 pounds. That's why I strongly urge the council to return an improved office of the People's Council and for the following reasons. The majority of communities and individuals can afford attorneys to represent them in land use cases. A people's council would enable them to better represent themselves. A people's council, in noting a questionable point, can intercede to elicit clarity. Residents would rarely have the ability to do that. Furthermore, keep these points in mind, a development Ombudsman has been in office for one and a half years. Development coordinators for White Flint and White, uh, White Oak have been appointed. Costly outside counsel have been hired to assist with the White Oak General Development Agreement. In light of those items, many, many of the residents of Montgomery County, with all due respect, find it an insult that the Office of the People's Council has been vacant for six years, while those significant pro-development offices and actions have been established. Bring back the Office of the People's Council. In your hearts and minds, you know it's the fair and right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, is Ms. Farber here? I mean, yeah. Oh, 
Amanda Ferber? No, not Justina Ferber. Not Justina Ferber. Uh, Amanda Ferber is not with us today. Uh, Ms. Goldberg. President Florine, members of the County Council, my name is Natalie Goldberg, and I'm speaking as an individual <clears throat> in support of Bill 4116, the Community Zoning and Land Use Resource Officer. I live in Garrett Park Estates, a community developed between the Grosvenor Metro Station area and the White Flint Sector Plan area, just south of White Flint Mall. I've had many occasions to question the next logical step in the planning and land use process during the evolution of the White Flint Sector Plan. Years ago, during a special exception request within my community, several of us were thankful for the helpfulness of the People's Council, using the People's Council as a resource officer. I believe that the new zoning and land use officer would provide an additional resource for the community as they try to understand the development process. While park and planning provides a pamphlet to guide participation in the process, it doesn't mention sketch plans, it lacks explanation for when project plans or pre-preliminary plans are used, it fails to define the public's role in the DRC meeting, and it doesn't address the more complicated issues such as plan amendments or long delays in the process. It's especially good that the Community Zoning and Land Use Resource Officer will not take a position on specific issues, but is an objective information agent. I can see using the officer for providing general information to a citizen association meeting, answering specific questions via phone or email, or meeting with one or more concerned citizens. I would hope this officer would not only attend pre-application community meetings, but would also have a speaking opportunity to inform the community of this independent source of information. One suggestion that I'd like to make is that the scope of this Community Zoning and Land Use Resource Officer extend to minor master plan amendments, which seem to suddenly and unexpectedly appear on the horizon and then move at a fairly rapid pace. If there are documented procedures for how to participate in this process, I'm not aware of them. I base my comments solely on the Grosvenor Strathmore Metro Area Minor Master Plan process, where the role between WMATA advocacy, developer ideas, and the planning board process has so far been unclear. My support for the community resource officer should in no way be taken to indicate dissatisfaction with council or planning staff as they require respond to citizen inquiries. Rather, I believe this officer is an additional resource for clarifying what is taking place and for providing impartial guidance. In conclusion, I hope you'll approve this position. I believe it will be a positive addition in support of community participation. Thank you for considering my comments. And uh, that concludes this public hearing. Uh, next, uh, we have a public hearing um, 